In the presentation I'm going to offer this afternoon, I'm going to echo quite a number of Linda Darling Hammond's comments and add a little bit more detail, I think, to this perspective on formative assessment, specifically what it is and what it is not. And that, in fact, is the title of my presentation, What, what It Is. Um, we've heard a number of uh, references already this afternoon to the notion of deeper learning as an outcome or an aspiration of the um, Common Core State Standards. Deeper learning, moving students into understanding core concepts, disciplinary practices, developing analytic practices around important subject matter, and the ability to transfer that understanding to new uh, situations to novel situations. So these are core competences that are aspirations of the Common Core of State Standards. Assessment, as we've heard already this afternoon, is going to be an integral part of ensuring that students, all students, because these, these standards and these aspirations are for all students, to make sure that all students are achieving the standards. And Linda Darling Hammond already introduced these notions of assessment of learning and assessment for learning. And I want to elaborate them a little bit more here. Because assessment can offer two views of a learner. The first view is a retrospective view, the sense of where students have been and what they've achieved at a particular point in their learning. And this kind of assessment is much more evaluative and the, the summative function of assessment where literally the assessment is summing up what students have learned up to a particular point. And those assessments serve a number of decision-making functions within the um, education system. They're not particularly useful for providing insights into how that deeper learning is developing during the course of its development. We need assessment that has a much more prospective view, an assessment that helps teachers figure out where students are on their way to deeper learning, where are they in relationship to understanding these important ideas of subject matter areas, and providing some insights into what they need to do next to support all students on an individual basis to move forward so that they're meeting these important learning goals. So we want assessment then, and we call in many other countries of the world, in fact, most countries of the world that have been involved in assessment or formative assessment refer to it as assessment for learning. Um, and I'll explain uh, why in a second. But basically, if we are going to move students toward deeper learning, we need to be obtaining substantive insights into how their thinking is developing as it is in the course of development. As Linda said, we want to make sure there are no misconceptions, no misunderstandings, and if there are, they need to be cleared up. As students are moving to deeper learning, they're grappling with important ideas. They don't move like a sports car from 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds. Deeper learning takes time, and it's important that teachers are aware of how that thinking is developing as it is in the course of development. So I'm going to offer you um, a definition. This is from a publication, a book I, I wrote um, in 2010. And um, this definition is, is research-based. This isn't just Margaret Heritage thinking, oh, you know, I've got a good idea. Here's formative assessment. This is actually uh, from a fairly substantive, um, empirical, and theoretical base on um, this notion of assessment for learning. And I want to point out various words that I've included here. First of all, you'll see that I'm not in calling it a test. Formative assessment is not a test. There's no such thing, actually, as formative assessments. Um, it's a planned process, and note the word planned. As teachers are planning their instructional practice, instructional experiences for, for students, they will also be thinking about how they're going to obtain evidence of how that learning is developing of how students' uh, thinking is moving forward and in what kinds of ways, how students are thinking. So it's planned. It takes place continuously. It's embedded into 
the teaching and learning process of the classroom. It's a pedagogical activity rather than a measurement event to provide a steady stream of information so that teachers can keep that learning on track to meeting le important lesson goals. And the, the purpose is to provide teachers and students with the feedback to close the gap between their current learning and desired lesson goals. And I want to stress that formative assessment happens at the lesson level. A lesson being one, two, three periods. Think about it. Students come to school to learn every day. If they don't come to school to learn, then why the heck are they even bothering to show up? So if they're coming to school to learn every day, then learning will take place minute by minute, day by day in the classroom. Teachers need to be constantly on top of how that learning is developing so that they're able to move students from where they started in the lesson to where they want them to be at the end of the lesson. And if you can see my hands, this notion of the closing the gap, I'm not talking about closing the achievement gap. Uh, Roy Sadler, a very eminent Australian scholar, wrote a seminal paper on formative assessment in 1989, and he referred to formative assessment as a feedback loop where you close the gap, feedback used to close the gap between current learning status and where students need to be at the end of a short cycle of learning. So it stands to reason that I come into a lesson, I'm going to learn something, hopefully, and there's a gap between where I start and where I went, end up. And so learning experiences and formative assessment will enable a teacher to support that learning um, so that students actually meet the intended learning goals. I hope, I hope that's clear. Is that clear? If not, you'll just have to read this brilliant book I've written. <laughs> okay. And I've got another even more brilliant one that was out last year. Uh, but you, you can just read this one. Um, and I wanted to highlight this uh, quote from the National Research Council publication National Academies Press, and if you haven't come across this book, it's well worth taking a look at, Education for Life and Work, Developing Transferable Knowledge and Skills in the 21st Century, and of course that's what deeper learning is about, developing transferable knowledge and skills. And what the panel, the National Research Council panel said, was that ongoing formative assessment by teachers can provide guidance to students which supports and extends their learning encouraging deeper learning and the development of transferable competencies. So if you weren't convinced by Joanne's very articulate um, advocacy for formative assessment, then maybe you'll be convinced by the National Research Council, this august body. And I, I, I do recommend uh, this book to you. Not as brilliant as mine, but, you know, close. So I want to now talk to you about what are the main features of formative assessment as a practice, a pedagogical practice in the classroom? And if I go into a classroom where I see formative assessment in action in an effective way that's true to the theoretical and empirical base on formative assessment, these are the kinds of things I'm going to see. First of all, there will be clear learning goals and success criteria. So teachers and students are clear about what the intended learning of that particular lesson is. Making a distinction here between what students are going to do and what they are going to learn. In other words, why did we all show up today? What are we going to learn as a result of being in this classroom for the, this particular period? Related to those learning goals are success criteria, the indicators of learning, how the teacher will know, and how the students will know if learning is progressing and they are moving forward to achieving those learning goals. So with clear learning goals and success criteria, teachers can elicit evidence of learning. And you notice here I'm using the term eliciting evidence of learning, which comes from the literature on formative assessment. It does not say give a test, because there's a myriad of different ways to elicit evidence of learning with interaction being one of the most prominent. Um, Linda Darling-Hammond referenced the importance of, of talk for learning, but talk is also an essential source of evidence about how students are thinking. So eliciting evidence of learning 
that is linked to or aligned to the learning goals and the success criteria so teachers have a sense at particularly important points during the lesson of where student thinking is so they can be informed do I need to move forward with the lesson as planned do I need to make some adjustments here do I need to stop and just start over um, or do I need to think about this in a different way for the next lesson so basically the evidence which is a steady stream because teachers have planned at which critical points in the lesson they want to obtain evidence and whom they want to obtain evidence from um, leads to evidence-based adjustments to teaching which includes feedback to students as you heard from Lynn feedback is not great in fact if you look at the literature on effective feedback uh, not all feedback is effective, by the way, I'm sure you know, but if you look at the literature on effective feedback, you'll see that grades are really antithetical to everything we know about effective feedback. Four minutes. Oh, I've only got ten more slides in four minutes. Okay, so fasten your seatbelts, it's going to be a rough ride. And then, as uh, Linda al already noted, that peer and self-assessment, we need learners who know how to learn. This is part of 21st century competences that they know how to learn. And they're able to take ownership and responsibility for their own learning. So these are four guiding questions uh, for teachers as they think about formative assessment. First of all, where is the learner going in this lesson? What are the goals? What's the success criteria? Where's the learner now? Uh, the evidence that they elicit at particular points in the lesson to know how that thinking is developing. They interpret that evidence. Where to next? Where does the student need to go to next? And then I have to think how to get there. Um, the same, uh, be because students and, and teachers are equal partners in this process, stands to reason, doesn't it? Because the only people who can do the learning are the learners. Learning is the property of the learner. And so these are significant questions for students as they are learning as well. Um, formative assessment then is not a test, it's not more frequent use of tests, it's not a score, it's not a one-time event, and it's not something that happens at the end of a period of learning. It happens during learning, and it's not something only teachers do. Students have to be an integral part of that process. What I find in my work around the country is that there are changes in practice. We've heard this notion of the paradigm shift, for ambitious instruction called for by the Common Core. And those teachers who implement formative assessment well really change how they think about teaching and learning. And those students who are in classrooms where teachers are implementing formative assessment well also change how they are as learners. Formative assessment is not about giving teachers a lot more tests. They've got enough of those, they don't need any more. They need valuable evidence that they decide how they're going to collect in the classroom, but they do need professional support. And I quote this from the assessment reform group, um, a, a group in the UK, uh, this was 2002, and this has been well um, cited across the world that teachers require professional knowledge and skills to plan for the assessment because it's a planned process, to observe learning, to analyze and interpret evidence, and give feedback to learners and support those learners in self-assessment. And this needs to be supported through initial and continuing professional development. And just to conclude, I want to offer you a couple of quotes from teachers. This is um, a quote from a teacher from Syracuse City School District in New York who I work with them as part, uh, part of the New York State Department of Education implementation a number of years ago. And this is what one teacher said. She said, formative assessment has not only changed me as a teacher, but I believe it has changed the students as learners. And then the final comment, and I think this really reflects the paradigm shift that we're asking teachers to make in their classrooms and this is from Sean he says I used to do a lot of explaining but now I do a lot of questioning I used to do a lot of talking but now I do a lot of listening I used to think about teaching the curriculum but now I think about teaching the students so Sean has well captured I think the kinds of shifts in practice and thinking about assessment and instruction 
that i think we're hoping that all our teachers in california will be able to make.